It's no secret that the typical subject of my reviews are of medieval European swords. And there's a good reason for that. I really like medieval European swords. However, they are not the breadth of the type of weapons that well, were common in the Middle Ages. And certainly, swords were something of a sidearm for the knight in the Middle Ages. So today I'm going to look at one of their primary weapons, a type of weapon that honestly I have not done enough reviews of. I'm going to be looking at the Arms and Armor Italian Warhammer. This Warhammer is an elegant pole weapon, modeled after a 16th century Italian example in the collection of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. This has been reproduced in the style of the original hammer, which is a very nice high status piece, but with an eye to the finished item being affordable. The decorative features of this piece would have been a way of demonstrating your wealth and good taste in the tournament list. One would want to show their ability to afford a nice, stylish weapon to all who attended the spectacle of a tournament. The animal head grasping the back spike in its mouth and the fluted features are all decorative elements seen in many of the nicest pieces from this period. The powerful back spike and pronged hammer face would be a challenge for the armor of the opposing knight. The three-pronged hammer face is integral with the stout fluted top spike and faceted back spike. The stepped lingots cover the side of the hardwood haft and are set with rivets. Here are the specifications for the Arms and Armor Italian Warhammer. Very often, pole arms and certainly warhammers have very little to speak to aesthetically. However, this one breaks the mold in that regard because, well, it's meant to be a little bit different and have some very, very decorative elements that really stand out. And certainly they do, and they're very odd in, in that kind of wry medieval sense. Although this is a 16th century example, so you're talking about right as the transition into the Renaissance period is happening. But it's very strange. In fact, the way it looks with this little uh, beastly head kind of almost regurgitating the back spike, um, it's a little bit odd and honestly quite funny. Uh, but it does give it a certain visual flair. And there are a lot of other little aspects to pay attention to. Little swirls, little decorations uh, all over the place. And at the end of the day, especially from far, it looks really pretty. I will say that the implementation of some of these aesthetic elements from Arms and Armor uh, leaves a little bit to be desired. There are elements that are not quite as clean as I would want, and certainly some of the lines are not quite cut in as well as they should be and as well as defined. Uh, and certainly the artistic element of this beast with its mouth gripping that back spike uh, there you can tell there's some obvious like almost mold lines and areas that probably could just use a little bit more cleaning up. Although to be honest given the price of this weapon it's not surprising that there isn't a lot more care put into it because that would uh, certainly increase the price and as stated one of the things they really wanted to do was make this affordable. All that said though I do really like the way this looks. I think it's really really pretty uh, and they've done a really good job of implementing kind of the the general flair of this decorative element in a really good way. Now the haft uh, is a nice wooden haft and they've stained it to a nice dark color and it shows the wood grains very well. Uh, the lingots are very very basic. I wouldn't really expect them to be much more but the fit and finish of this entire piece uh, is really really fantastic and normally I would talk about fit and finish more under functionality I certainly will but it's important to note that a lot of times when you get a pole arm or a war hammer uh, pieces such as the, as the lingots don't always tend to sit as flush to the wood and even though they made a note that there is uh, potentially a natural bend in the wood this is actually incredibly straight and given the length of this pole arm yeah it's really long um it's amazing how little of a change there is in terms of the straightness uh down the length of this wooden shaft um i am a big fan of the way they have designed this and again given the price uh you'd be hard pressed to find uh, a better a 
pole arm warhammer type weapon uh, that meets this kind of level of decorative element. Uh, so I count me impressed with it. As I said, there are some things that could be fixed, but aesthetically, I think it's very pleasing. Of course, what good is a pole axe if it's not functional? And as noted, it's meant to be very decorative, but that's more of a status symbol, and it has to actually function as a weapon. Now, I will say that this kind of Warhammer, um, I'm honestly afraid of it. I would never want to go up against a weapon like this. I I'll tell you why. Um, back spikes absolutely frighten me, um, but as I'll note in a moment, that's actually not the most fearsome element. Now this back spike uh, could easily pierce through armor, even uh, halfway decent plate armor, but more importantly, it's meant to get into kind of joint areas, just like this uh, kind of top spike for thrusting. Um, generally speaking, uh, you're not really trying to use this to puncture armor as much because you do have a chance for that to slip, um, but this back spike is massive. Uh, and, and given the weight, the heft of the head of this hammer, this could do some serious damage. Um, I will note that the, the top spike, given the balance and heaviness on the head, um, I actually find it to be less useful. I, I think you would have a hard time getting really good accurate strikes with that point. And I think that's kind of a given uh, because honestly this top spike is actually rather small given the uh, kind of typical size you might see on a pole axe on a thrusting weapon. It would be a very, very small spear tip. Um, so I think it's meant more for the utility aspect, but uh, with this being a hammer, it's meant to be swung. And so you're really looking for that back spike, but more so you're looking for this. Uh, this hammer head with a three pronged spiked head, that terrifies me. This is the type of thing that's meant to grip into plate armor and a grab hold, which means that when it strikes, it doesn't glance off, but it puts the full impact of this weapon into your opponent. Um, yeah, that's frightening. And I will say that um, the way this is implemented and certainly based on the original, these things could really catch very well. Uh, armor alone, it'd be a fearful thing. Without armor, you wouldn't want to come anywhere near this. The lingots, uh, I'm actually pretty happy with. They're, they're actually a lot shorter than you would expect a lingot to be given the overall length, again, of this pole arm. Uh, but I think that's really because you end up having to grip it so much higher on the shaft here. Uh, it's such a, a top heavy weapon. This head, as small as it actually is, is extremely heavy. And, and given that, you really have to grip higher up, choke up on the pole. Um, and because of that, well, you're really probably not going to be taking many strikes uh, on the Langit if you were actually using it. That said, um, well, it gives good protection. Normally you would see Langits go around all four sides. Uh, the museum original I don't think does either. Uh, so you really only have it on two sides. That's actually sufficient because Langits are really meant to protect the haft of the weapon from being chopped and cut away over time in the battle, uh, as also just to give uh, some minimal protection um, to the overall piece. Uh, because of the way the lingot is actually integrated into the head, uh, that's a little bit odd. If you were to actually damage the lingots, well, you'd probably have to just cut them off and add some new ones in. Um, I think a lot of times you would actually tend to see lingots be separate pieces. I'm not really sure how it is in the museum original. Um, and you can see that there is some decorative elements on the head that would actually suggest that would actually normally be the case. Uh, but it is just a decorative element. So they're all one big solid kind of molded piece. Um, and I will say that uh, again, fit and finish is really good, which means this thing is rock solid. Uh, I have no doubt as to the ferocity and functionality of this weapon. And the wooden haft, as big as it is, is actually really light, which means that uh, you're not adding a lot of extra weight. Now that is important to note for functionality because you're not adding the weight, well then you're adding a bit of uh, imbalance. As you can see, um, the balance point's actually kind of over here somewhere on the langet side, um, which means when you're holding it where you should be, uh, even with both hands, um, you can really feel it begin to pull down. What this really means though is once this thing is in motion, uh, you're gonna have a lot of momentum behind it and that thing's going to hit really hard as it's supposed to. Uh, so 
yeah, functionality wise, I, I find it to be a little bit off balanced, uh, but I think that's really intentional. Um, and at the end of the day, I have no doubts that this could do some serious damage to an actual physical opponent. Uh, and certainly in just the uh, small tests that I did, which I didn't film them um, because they were really tests for my understanding of this weapon, um, but not so much for show. Uh, I, I feel like um, I feel like armor could probably withstand fairly well against the back spike, but this head, uh, I would never want to go up against it. That three-pronged head is actually really, really fearsome in my opinion. So I'm really actually quite impressed from a functionality standpoint with this pole hammer. Uh, this is probably actually one of the best pole hammers I've actually had the pleasure to have uh, messed around with and used. And that's including my kind of smaller war hammers. Um, any type of war hammer, uh, I always feel like there's kind of indefinable reasons that they feel really, really good. And this one feels amazing. Um, so from just the aspect of being able to hold it, how I think it would hold up, the fact that this thing is rock solid in construction and so incredibly heavy at the head of the hammer, um, this is a fantastic functional uh, pole axe, pole hammer, uh, amazing war hammer. Unsurprisingly, it's actually really hard to find a good war hammer, um, especially one that is done as a pole weapon. Um, a lot of the ones you can find online tend to be much shorter, single-handed hafted weapons, uh, but a good tall pole axe style war hammer uh, is really, really difficult to find. And I think Arms and Armor has done a fantastic job being inspired by a museum original and creating something that is really, truly functional. Now, there is a price tag associated with it. I wouldn't say it's the highest price ever, but yeah, it could be maybe a little bit lower. I think a lot of that comes down to just the, the fit and finish they're trying to put on it, as well as the decorative elements, because that takes time to produce. And of course, this is not something that's just being imported from India. Um, so because of that, there's a, an increase in price. However, if I were to have one major complaint, it would be that the fit and finish on the decorative elements, in my opinion, could actually be a little bit better given the overall price. Um, certainly, I would imagine that it's right on the edge there given the type of steel and the type of wood, the materials and the, the effort that's going into creating this thing. Um, you know, the, the shortcuts they might take on the decorative elements, uh, yeah, maybe it's justified in the price, but I really think if you're gonna spend that type of money, you'd like to have it just a little bit better, a little bit better fit and finish in terms of the, uh, the, the decorative elements. But at the end of the day, really, again, that's the aesthetics. The functionality is obviously so much more important a lot of times. And this is an extremely functional uh, pole hammer, war hammer. It is quite amazing. Uh, it's funny because I'm always having to look down the length of this thing because it's really, really, really long. Uh, even when you read the description of this item, uh, it doesn't really quite sink in exactly the size of this thing. but. It's a really, really big pole hammer, and, uh, and I really like that about it. I mean, my goodness, this thing is just massive. And I really think that especially given the, uh, the fact that uh, this type of pole is honestly really hard to come by uh, as something that can be utilized, it's a, it's a rectangular kind of squares pole. They've cut it to that octagonal shape. Um, that's honestly a rare thing, really hard to find. And so the fact they went that far with it is actually really great. It means you can keep good edge alignment. I'm happy with all that good stuff. So uh, overall, I really, really like this pole hammer. Um, there's a part of me that wishes that it was actually mine. Unfortunately, it is not. I'd like to actually thank Corey, one of my viewers, who uh, generously uh, donated this to me for a brief period. I'm just borrowing it. And now I have to unfortunately send it back um, but it is much appreciated because it gave me a chance to uh, mess around with this thing, really begin to appreciate just how good it is. Um, certainly adding it to my list of things I might want in the future, uh, although I have my eye on another pole axe from Arms and Armor, but um, this is really a great thing. So Corey, thank you for donating this or letting me borrow this for the time being. And uh, I am extremely enthralled by this weapon. Uh, I think more companies need to uh, spend more time making pole hammers, pole axes, those type of things. And Arm and Armor, I think, really has the market cornered right now on really good ones. So if you're looking for a really good uh, pole style war hammer, uh, look no further because I think this Arms and Armor uh, Italian 
Warhammer is really something amazing. So yeah, this is it, the Arms and Armor Italian Warhammer. I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out Medieval Review on Patreon.